Little is known of his early life. Instead, most of the insights into the life of Matthew C. Perry came after his commissioning with the United States Navy. In 1809, Matthew C. Perry was commissioned as a midshipman warrant, the equivalent of a modern-day ensign, the first rank a naval officer can achieve. He was assigned to the USS Revenge, a schooner that served as a gunboat before being assigned to the USS President, one of America's first six frigates. Perry received his first taste of action as the USS President emerged victorious over the HMS Little Belt during the War of 1812. Unfortunately for Perry, he was wounded in action when a cannon exploded from overheating and he had to sit out most of the war in recovery. Shortly before the War of 1812 ended, he participated in the USS President's victory over the HMS Belladava. Following the War of 1812, Perry served on several ships in the Mediterranean Squadron. However, Perry did not participate in the Second Barbary War. After that, he was assigned to the USS Cyan off the coast of Liberia, a joint mission with the British Navy to suppress the international slave trade. Following this, Perry was given command of the schooner USS Cyan and continued his work in suppressing the slave trade in the Caribbean. The USS Cyan is distinguished for having planted the American flag in the, for in the Florida Keys, physically claiming them for the United States. Perry was then promoted to fleet captain of the Caribbean Squadron under Commodore Rogers. Although the United States Navy did not have admirals until 1857, Perry was the equivalent of a modern one-star rear admiral lower half, responsible for assisting the commanding admiral. Following this, Fleet Captain Perry became second in command of the U.S. New York Naval Yard, later known as the Brooklyn Naval Yard, and began formulating his ideas of mentoring young sailors and modernizing the United States Navy. Specifically, Fre Fleet Captain Perry oversaw the construction of the steamship USS Fulton, the United States' second steam frigate. After its construction, Captain Perry took command of the USS Fulton, where he created the United States Navy's first Corps of Engineers and Naval Gunnery School, partly inspired by his previous wounding on the USS President. Secretary of the Navy Paulding noted Captain Perry's initiative and promoted him to Commodore. He was sent back to the New York Naval Yard as its commanding officer. Ultimately, Commodore Perry was too valuable to relegate to the Navy Yard, and he was once again assigned to the Africa Squadron, only this time as its commander. However, the Africa squadron was called home to aid in the Mexican-American War. During the Mexican-American War, Commodore Perry successfully laid siege to and oversaw the capture of over a dozen Mexican naval forts, ports, and cities. Of all his notable accomplishments, Commodore Perry's career reached its highest point with his expedition to Japan. He used gunboat diplomacy to force Japan to open its ports to American trade and to care for shipwrecked American sailors. Following the Japanese expedition, Congress awarded Commodore Perry $20,000, the equivalent of $628,000 in 2023. After the expedition, Commodore Perry was assigned to the Naval Efficiency Board. During this time, he oversaw the expansion and fleet-wide formalization of his engineer, gunnery, and apprenticeship programs. Only two years later, Commodore Perry was forced into retirement due to medical problems stemming from liver cirrhosis due to alcoholism, severe arthritis from so much time spent on the ship, and gout. Although he was honorarily promoted to Rear Admiral, however, Commodore Perry was not idle during his final years. He used his time carefully by reconnecting with his wife and surviving children before his death and writing his memoir of the expedition to Japan, later known as Perry's Expedition. Following his death, the flag which Commodore Perry had flown from each of his flagships, starting with the USS Shark, was flown on the battleship Missouri during the Japanese surrender, ending World War II. This flag is still on display at the United States Naval Academy at Annapolis, Maryland. <laughs>